we need to talk about the high egg prices. Now, the basic reason why the prices of eggs are high is simple supply and demand. There's a certain demand for eggs and the supply of chickens to lay them is getting less and less. It isn't the avian flu that is killing them. It is our public health community that is killing them by the tens of millions. This may seem controversial to you, but I've lost all confidence in the public health community and their management of COVID was really just the final nail in the coffin. At present, their strategy when encountering a case of the bird flu on a chicken farm is to slaughter every last one of the chickens, shut down the operation wholesale and put the whole thing in quarantine, not even allowing the food out so other chickens can, can eat it. Silliness. Antibiotic resistance occurs when you don't take the full course and the little buggers that are the most resistant don't die. And it's these more robust pesky cells that live to reproduce. So if you want to make invaders that resist treatment by an antibiotics, the best way is to kill off the weak ones and leave the strong. That's basic. Now, invert it. Think of the chickens as the bacteria and the avian flu as the antibiotic. If you want to have chickens that are resistant, you let the flu do its worst. The chickens that survive will be more immune than the ones that didn't, obviously. And you breed those chickens. The R0 on this is really high and the death rate is nearly 100%, but not 100%. Some will survive. The chickens are all going to die in a day or so anyway, the same amount of time it would take to slaughter them. So why not just let the antibiotic do its worst and breed the survivors and put this flu behind us completely? I know they'll say things about not wanting it to mutate, but for all they know, it'll mutate into something less le lethal. And it's hard to imagine it mutating into something more lethal than something that already kills almost the entire flock. As I said, basic. And they'll say they're worried about it mutating into something that spreads to humans. But again, they have no idea what it will mutate to. And they already know it's a really bad disease. So it's not like this isn't a risk that um, couldn't be managed. It's already being managed. But we're talking about people that thought it was a good idea to send old people who were infected with the coronavirus back into nursing homes and care centers, even after it was absolutely clear that the most vulnerable of all were, you guessed it, the old people. So not the best and brightest in charge of our public health, if you ask me. I don't want to dwell on this point too much, but I did think I should mention it because it is by far the number one reason why egg prices are high and no one is talking about it. You would think after our experiences with COVID, everything our public health officials do would fall under intense scrutiny. But I guess if you make people afraid enough, they're happy to do just whatever they're told, even if it means stripping away their own liberty and, of course, the liberty of others. And oh, by the way, sending hundreds of thousands of veritable typhoid Marys back into retirement homes to infect even more of the most vulnerable. Your public health officials thought that was a very good idea. So remember that when they want to slaughter tens of millions of chickens and send armed SWAT teams in to shut down farms selling raw milk. Setting aside this lunacy, if not idiocy, if not rank immorality, there are other important considerations too. And as much as I'd like to continue venting, let's get into some of those other factors. It has become economical to essentially factory produce chickens such that before all this nonsense began, you could buy a dozen eggs for under a dollar easily. But let us consider whether or not we were really buying our eggs that cheaply. Does not the cost of the chicken factory go into that price? Does not the price of cold chickens go into that price as well? And does not the fact that obviously when you have that many creatures of a sort all packed together that tightly, it stands to reason that if a dangerous disease gets in, it's going to wreak havoc on the whole operation and that's priced in as well. So it isn't that it's really the case that eggs were, were ever available for under a dollar. Rather, there was a bomb with a delayed fuse built right into the whole operation right from the beginning. It was only a matter of time that the fuse would be lit, and then we'd have to pay the costs as a society of the bomb going off. So really, you have to consider the price of eggs as being the average of the price of eggs over, say, a five or ten year period as these bombs periodically go off, reducing the supply of egg laying chickens without reducing the demand for them and jacking up the prices. And I don't know what that price would be. I mean, our family has only eaten store-bought eggs maybe three times in the last five or six years. 
but it probably works out to three dollars or four dollars a dozen at least at least right now depending on how many more tens of millions of egg laying chickens are destroyed in the next year or so and incidentally three or four dollars a dozen is what we're selling our eggs for right now but we could not sell our much healthier small farm eggs for the for that price when the eggs were a dollar in the store the most we could ever get was two dollars a dozen meanwhile unlike with the factory chickens my small flock lives a relative life of leisure happily munching on bugs and table scraps and all kinds of plants and seeds it is a bunch that is much more unlikely to fall prey to a super virus and it's not at all likely to become the breeding ground of a new one not that this would stop our intrepid public health heroes from happily destroying my livelihood if my chickens had even the slightest sniffle. Now, as it happens, there are thousands of small farmers out there ready and willing to sell eggs to the public. But the public has been unwilling up until now to pay these small farmers what they need for it to be worthwhile. In the bigger picture, this is something that we really need to talk about. To put it bluntly, in a very real sense, the high cost of eggs today is not because of silly public health policies or chicken factories turning out eggs on an assembly line, but because consumers themselves financed the chicken factories, which in turn attracted the lustful eye of the public health community. As with eggs, so with many items that we enjoy, both in the grocery store and outside it. Now, I'm a capitalist. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not opposed to businesses at all and certainly not opposed to big businesses. So I admit that the bigger the business, the more caveats come to mind. The simple fact is that by choosing to buy the cheapest things, whether produce or widgets, we only make it harder for the people with much more robust operations, the small farmer and the small businessman and so on, to stay in business. These go out of business regularly, but the cheap goods provided by our big businesses turns out to be like the cheap prices of eggs. Once the supply chain gets crunched, which is virtually inevitable, then we all have to pay the higher prices that result from the vulnerabilities and these chains becoming exposed. Unfortunately, the smaller produce farms and smaller businesses, which live right next door to you, thus eliminating the supply chain altogether, aren't there anymore to fill in the gap because they went out of business because consumers wouldn't choose them. To put it delicately, the consumers themselves created the situation. In exchange for cheaper prices now, they overlooked the fact that much higher prices were inevitable as the vulnerabilities intrinsic to the systems finally made themselves known. Now, I fully understand the desire to pay the lowest price on things, and certainly I have had many times in my life where I really had no choice. I couldn't afford the better quality item or the healthier food, and I had to pay what I could actually afford. My goal here is not to make people feel guilty. My goal here is to connect some dots that I don't think get connected often enough and hopefully goad consumers into paying a little more for healthier and superior items that have that other important benefit of not having the same vulnerabilities to the supply chain and factory-based economies. It isn't just about being willing to pay more either. It will be necessary to make the effort to drive out of the suburb and make relationships in the rural areas. To be perfectly frank, city folks are almost completely dependent on what is produced in rural areas. And making those relationships would do double duty in reminding city dwellers that so much of what they enjoy comes from the sweat of farmers who are not being paid enough and are working very long hours, not to mention the long hours put in by truck drivers. What would be ideal is if some of these big chains get shoved out by smaller operations. That would be amazing, right? But it's only going to happen if you, the consumer, begin choosing to buy food and goods from operations that are not dependent on cargo ships coming from China or trucks driving a thousand miles. Not to put too fine a point on it, if you get my gist here, this isn't only about having healthier food and supporting small businesses but about preserving the security of the nation itself. Yes, national security depends on this. Smaller independent operations with supply chains shorter than your arm are going to be less vulnerable to macroeconomic problems, up to and including the arrival of an avian flu that targets factory chickens. Thanks for listening. Like and subscribe.